Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Juliana and in today's video I'm going to talk about, I'm going to do a review video about the book of March for my challenge 12 books for 2023 and I'm talking about Gates of Fire by Stephen Pressfield. This is a Portuguese edition but you may recognize the cover it is the same. I'm going to put I'm going to put here the two covers that I researched. One is more old. I think that's this one where we can see the soldier in the middle and then a more recent one that is with a more well it's like it's it's similar to this cover. This is another book by Stephen Pressfield. It has an image, the title here, and then a, a little square in the middle. This is from Alexander's, Alexander the Great. Um, and, well, so this book was published in 1998. Uh, and Stephen Pressfield is an author, is an American author of historical fiction, non-fiction and screenplays. Um, and some of his works include the 1995 novel The Legend of Beggar Vance and 2002 non-fiction book The War of Art. He, so his father was in the US Navy and he joined the US Marine Corps serving as an infantryman. I'm talking about Stephen, the son. So, here we have a historical fiction novel about the war of the Spartans with the Persians in Thermopylae. In Thermopylae. And the subtitle of this the book is an epic about the Battle of Thermopylae. Thermopylae. So, I don't know much about the, well, Greece history. Uh, I'm, I want to know more and about the ancient philosophers and I want to dive in in that subject, but for now I'm a bit ignorant about it. So this book was, um, I can say, a bit of an entrance to the Greece history and to, um, and to the culture of antique Greece. And right at the beginning of the book, the author, we have maps, so you can see here. The author has a historical note where he says that in four, 480 before Christ the Persian Empire commanded by the king Xerxes according to Her Herod had two million men crossing the Elspont with the purpose of invading and enslave Greece. So this number, two million men, two million soldiers, was already stated that is a bit extrapolated. So they were about three hundred thousand. So that's a lot of men. That's a lot of um, soldiers. Per se, so two million is like I I'm supposing it was the myth that they were so st so strong and they were so many that that they have to be astronomical, you know. And he he uh, continues. There were were chosen, so they were approaching Greece. And it was there were chosen 300 Spartans to be sent uh, to Thermopylae. That was a straight passage between mountains and sea, where 
the Persians and their cavalry would be partially neutralized and the, it was expected that an elite force of men volunteering to sacrifice their lives could retain the invasion, the Persian invasion, for at least some days. So, 300 Spartans and their allies, in fact, do that for they stopped the invasion for seven days. I'm sorry I'm being a bit slow because I'm translating to English because I have here a Portuguese edition that was the book I read. So, so it goes on to say that they all died, so the sacrifice was total. And the allies that the Spartans had was, were from Thespia and they fought till the last man and they were an example of bravery and sacrifice that inspired the Greeks. In the spring and in the fall of that same year, the Greeks united and defeated the Persians in Salamina and in Plataea. I'm not sure if the names are as I pronounce them, but I suppose for approximation you can research and verify that. So they protected the first steps for democracy and occidental or western liberty. Two monuments can be found nowadays in Thermopylae. One of them, more modern, it's called Leonidas Monument in honor of the Spartan king that died there. And in the, that monument we can read what uh, the response that Leonidas said to Xerxes, the Persian king, that Xerxes demanded that the Greeks deliver their arms and his response was come and get come and get it, or come pick them up, something like that. The second monument, more old, is a simple stone where is there we can read words by the poet Simonides, being perhaps the most famous epita military epitaph. Stranger that, that passes or stranger who passes, go say to the Spartans that here lies, that here we lie in obedience to their laws. <laughs> so, so I'm trans I'm literally translating it. So perhaps it's not the more correct translation, of course, but I think you can understand. So very beautiful. I really enjoyed this uh, note, historical note note and then right after in the next page we have a quote from histories or stories of heroes we have him say that Dionysus was considered the more valiant soldier of them all and it is said that in the the day before of the battle a Thracian said that the, arch the Persian archers were so many that when they uh, fired their arrows, the arrows blocked the sun. And Dionysus, very serene upon such perspective, uh, have responded very well. We will fight at, in the shadows <laughs> or in the shadow. So, you know, that's a perspective and um, maybe, maybe a proof of the bravery and the courage and the spirit of battle and spirit, mental strength that the Spartans had. So this story is, as I've said, is fictional. So we have here a presentation of several characters that I suppose really existed, but it's a fictional story, you know. So we have here names that were, I suppose, from real soldiers and real 
wives and real uh, real people real f figures that have e existed and lived uh, in those times and uh, passed through this uh, battle with Persia uh, but we have here not a narration that is um, a third person narrator telling us the story but we have here an interesting well I I thought it was interesting um, the way that we have here our narrator so we begin the story and the that battle has already happened it is now said to us that not a Spartan but someone who was an ally of the Spartans he is now a prisoner of the king churches and his, he, it is him who is telling the story to the king about the Spartans. So, our prisoner is called Sheons, or Sheo, as a nickname. And he is a prisoner, as I've said, and is badly wounded. So, the surgeons of the court and of the king are taking care of him. So, he can tell the story of the Spartans, because... The king of Persia, Xerxes, was very admired and very... How can, I, how can I say it? So he admired the bravery and the, the stoicism and the uh, fight till the last of us that the Spartans show in, that, in the Thermopylae battle. So he was very interested to know more about these people and this culture and how they were raised, how they were trained. So everything surrounding the, the Spartan upbringing and the, the, the Spartan, particularly about how they trained to, the men to be soldiers. So he wanted to know more about his enemy and why they were so strong-minded. So, but we don't have here a story that is straight to the point. So, we have Sheon is telling his story first. Oh, better. Through and through, he's telling his personal story. So, his upbringing, where he was from, what happened to him when he was a child how he became how he came to go to to Lacedaemonia i think is how you say it it's the name of the land where spartans lived uh, so he he tells us that he lived in astaco and that his land was sacked by uh, Argos soldiers where they destroyed almost everything and killed almost everyone including his mother and father and he ran away with a slave called Bruxo and a cousin, a girl called Diomaca and they had to live in the forest where they eventually oh well, or they stole food they stole little animals from other villagers or they hunt so when he was about 12 years old his cousin was a bit older she was like 14 or something at the time so Sheones admired his co her his cousin very much he, we can say that he he had um, he fell in love with her in a way like right even when they were children, he had a um, crush on her, so he never forgot her. Something happens to the Omaka that is really terrible, and we find out some particularities about that event more to the end of the book. The Omaka says that she wants to get married and have a family, and so they have to go in different paths, and... Shiones didn't want that, 
he didn't want to be separated from his co his cousin but he decides to go to Lacedaemonia and is there where as he is he's not a citizen he's not a Spartan he was adopted in a way but like a slave and he's here where so the book is divided in chapters and each chapter has so the book is divided yes we, in books okay they he call it books and each book has different chapters and each book it's called a different character or a different place and we have here a presentation and the life of Sheones after this first part of his childhood till where he was 12 we have after that we have um, the narration of his life in be, between Spartans and so as a slave between Spartans so although he was a slave so he will tell us much very um, many things about the training of children of Spartan children or Spartan boys how it was full-on right at the beginning so when they were about seven years old the training would begin for them and it was like very very hard they were very they were very hard on the children right at the beginning it didn't matter if it they were ch children and so there is a, a book in here that's called Alexandra's um, that is a character of uh, this story uh, where he has um, a situation where he left his shield like he, he leans the shield in a um, negligent way and a superior or a mentor that is very strict calls his attention about it and says that he can do that because the shield is in Spartan culture or in military culture is the most important thing maybe more important than, than the spade or anything of that of those, those type of arms the shield is something that every soldier has to have like a second skin because it protects himself and it protects the soldier on the side <laughs> uh, I couldn't find the words and so there we have a description of the humiliation that that superior did to Alexander's because Alexander's was a very sensitive boy he, he was very considerate and very gentle so he wasn't like the stereotype of a soldier that or a trainee in this case that maybe this superior was expecting so he he make fun of that and it, it is said to us that even one of the of the boys died during training he was so exhausted but he didn't want to stop he didn't want to be make fun of or be inferior to his peers that he continued the training and continued moving and so on and he died so we have here like the standards of the Spartan military mentality uh, and so then we have so Shiones tell, uh, tells some story he, he sometimes comes back and forth in time so he tells a story that is happening when they were like 10 years old and then he, he will tell a story when they are 15 so some time lapses happen and then he also tells a story about um, 
a bastard that is called so he is known to be he has a nickname so a literal translation would be the the rooster i don't know if it in english it was translated like that or translated no if you wrote like that if he called this character rooster but he is a bastard so he's son of a spartan but outside of marriage and so he for him to he has an opportunity to rise up and be considered um he has more than one opportunity actually he he's proposed to be a spartan citizen two times and he denies because he's very proudful and the pride gets in the way so he he doesn't want to be how can i say bought by the prestige or the the superiority mentality of spartans you know and so that's a very interesting character in here that i really enjoyed reading about i really like alexander's as well and so shayonis will go on and tell more about his master so Dian dianesis he's a, a, a more older it will it will come to a point where dionysus and aret his wife have a similar idea about the life of shayonis and what he should do so aret will have a conversation with shayonis and she will tell him that he should follow his heart and um, choose freedom and get out of there and go find the omaka and marry her basically because by you know the conversation chionis ends up i don't know if he tells her or if she already knew i think she already knew who the omaka was i think yeah because she was interested in the boy she liked him that was an interesting conversation so there's um i have to say there's a, a point in here where as you can well if you're listening to me right now you must be thinking that this book is all about the spartan men and this because we are talking about a battle and a battle is fought by men so in this book will be all about them but is not and i found it very curious and very refreshing because there's um this is right at the end where the king of sparta leonidas so this is all told by shionis right get that in your mind don't forget it but here there here's a point where there's a conversation about the courage of men so they do a comparison between the courage of men and what that means and what that translates in and a courage of a woman or of women and how a courage of a woman translates and then at the end of the book we have a conversation between a woman that is a spartan that so because so the king has to choose the 300 right he will choose in his village 300 soldiers and we think that well the mindset will be the strongest the bravest the courageous ones the more capable ones the more uh, strong ones right that will be our that will be our reasoning but nevertheless the reasoning of the king will will later find out is another <laughs> and it's about the woman of sparta i'm not going to tell you what it is because i think it's so beautiful to come to these final pages and read that i never cried during a uh, reading experience but i i wet my eyes reading this so 
it was very powerful, I thought. In a way, a strategic thinking of the king, because he was thinking beyond Sparta. He was thinking in Greece and how Greece would eventually have to combat the Persian Empire. And so, yeah, I'm not going to say, if I say more, I spoil it. And I think the most beautiful thing that you will read is that thing that I'm talking about. And it's very, well, I can't say that How can I explain it? Well, there's bravery of men, but, there, but, there, but there's a bravery of women that they complement each other, you know? It's always a, a complementary work. Yeah, but very beautiful. You have to read it. And so, Sheones will as I was saying, we'll talk about different characters. So then you will talk about Alexanders, you will talk about Rooster, he will talk about Aret, he will talk about Dionysus, Polynesis, that's another character that is a, a trainer that they have to speak for the Spartan boys. He's very strict. There's a point during the battle of the Thermopylae where they will figure out a plan to kill the king. So their thinking is if they kill the head of the pyramid, the body falls. And in that plan, some of these characters will... that weren't getting so very well the world and getting along during the story will come together and will recognize each other and see value in each other so they will see with different eyes well as you suppose and as it's natural to happen right because that's a stressful and a, a really confrontation with death right in imminent death so the animosities that could have exist there fall, right? And the partnership and the brotherhood is stronger. So all that ki kind of sentiment, the conversations are brilliant. I really enjoyed how they are very profound and they think with each other, but it's really short chapters, so they have like 10 pages each, more or less, and you will... Well, I have to be truthful. At the beginning, I was enjoying, then there were a part in the beginning, but a bit further, that I was a bit bored, so the story wasn't... I wasn't getting into it so easily and but there comes a time where he talks about well when it comes to talk about the rooster that character I really start to enjoy the book and after that it was brilliant and so he eventually will come to the battle to the moment of, of the battle um, and we will have the description of how they built um, a frontier of stone between uh, between the the passage the straight not straight the narrow the narrow passage of Thermopylae so they have a bit more time and an obstacle to the Persians so they um, could couldn't get to them so easily so the the objective of that battle wasn't to defeat the Persians because that was nearly impossible but that the objective was to give time to the cities to evacuate the near the nearest cities and the Greeks in Athens and so on could have more time to plan and strategize how they would combat the Persians. And of course, 
the Spartans would, well, kill uh, thousands, I suppose. Uh, so they would have a tour in the numbers of the soldier, the Persian soldiers. Then we, so when I hear, when I heard about the, um, the 300 of Sparta, I, I thought there were exactly 300 and nothing more. But the, the, um, with reading this story, as I already read to you, in the historical note. So they were the 300 of Sparta, but they had allies of Thespia. So they were like thousands, not 300,000 like the Persians, not like that, of course, but they were thousands. And so they had help at the beginning because there comes a point where Leonidas, the king of Sparta, um, tells his allies to uh, retreat and the 300 stay alone so that was for the last day of so they fought for six days and then for the last day uh, well they didn't know it will be the last day you know but um, we know now that it was the last day he, he tells his allies to retreat and the 300 fight till, well, they are all dead. And we have here the descriptions of the battle, so how they would combat and, and the, the inspiring discourses that Leonidas would say to his soldiers and the mind and the strategy and the psychology of battle that he knew about the Persians. So something like they have more fear than, than us because they are enslaved. So they are not fighting as free men. So because there is a, a comparison that is made in this book between the Persian army and the Spartan army. So the Spartan army are all free men. So they are battling for the continuation of that freedom of their land. In comparison to the Persians, where they were like Egyptians. I don't remember other nationalities, but or other tribes that the, the Persian king has already enslaved. But it's like he had the... Immortals, I think that's how we call them. Let me see. Yes, the Immortals are the true Persian army. And then they have the army of the enslaved lands, you know. So uh, they were fighting because they were slaves. And so the, they weren't fighting with will, you know. They were fighting because they were obliged to do that. So the psychology behind that, um, Leonidas was very aware of it. And so he inspired his men to fight and to be confident that they will um, destroy whoever comes to that wall. So very strong and the the, um, the plan that i was saying the plan that they, they did to kill the king it's very you want you know it's not going to work because as long as the um, the story is being told we have some intervals between the telling of the story of Sheones, where we come back to the uh, present time where Sheones is a, a in prisoner a prisoner of uh, Xerxes and he's telling the story. So Sheonis is telling the story to a historian of Xerxes and there comes a point where he will tell the story uh, directly to Xerxes but there's more um, at the end of the book because Xerxes wanted to be to exist um, register a written register 
of the story of the Spartans. And so that's why that historian is there. There comes a time, as I was saying, where in the Battle of Thermopylae, a little group of five men or so are sent to the, <laughs> to the enemy. So where the enemy was, had this camp, er, had the tent of the Persian king. And so he, they were on a mission to kill the king. And you want so much to root for them. And, you know, you want them to kill him and be victorious. But you know, because of the story and the history, you already know that they will fail. But still, you are in the moment with everything happening and the descriptions of everything that was happening at, at that moment and everyone was getting so you know involved in that to kill him and you want so much to to they so they fulfill the mission but so frustrating and but it's very interactive that experience because you are there with them you know and then you have the description of the defeat of the Persians in Athens so they will have um, a fight in the sea between the ships of Persians and Greeks and the Greeks will be victorious upon the Persians and churches will come back to Persia and uh, uh, command to his commander to fulfill the enslavement of Greece. And there we have a moment where the historian that was writing the story that Cheonis was telling him in the face of being killed by the Greeks and he for some reason, um, for some reason or no, for a purpose starts to, to yell names of the, uh, per, the people that Cheonis told him. And so that is the thing that saves him. And he will become a translator for the Greeks and his life will be spared. Eventually he comes back to Persia by uh, by an exchange that uh, the Persian king does between prisoners but we can feel and it is said that that historian became not obsessed but became I don't know even the word that I, I can use to explain what I mean but he became so to admire the Spartans and the story and all those people that um, Shionis told him about and the, the Shionis himself because he considers Shionis a friend at the end of things that even in Persia he had an opportunity to um, know what happened after the battle so what happened to the wives and to the women that were left behind and he's so interested, but the person that they were interviewing didn't have all the information and he was very frustrated, frustrated by that because he, he, was, he became so... I'm sorry, I can't explain myself. It's like he had a reveration to the Spartans and what happened in the Thermopylae. And the story ends with the... Um, that historian finding out what was written in the monument that they were they put there in the in in Thermopylae that was the same that I told you at the beginning on the historical note where there says stranger who pa who passes Go say to the Spartans that we lie here in obedience to their laws. And the book ends like that. And I have to say, I loved this book. I thought it was a story that begins like in a shaky way. And then it becomes 
so enthralling and then you want you are <laughs> you are there with them you want them to su succeed and you know they aren't but you you told tell yourself how they didn't do it how they couldn't why you become so attached to the characters and so you know you have pity because you get to know them you get to understand their feelings understand where they're coming from but i think you have really to read it to find out everything that i'm talking about because it's so enticing and you get yourself at the end of the story like yeah they all died it's so sad but at the same time you you are there with them and you you cheer for them so it was a very beautiful story the chapters are really as i said are more or less 10 pages so you don't be dwelling on the reading so you can have stops at any point and you want well at least that what was happen what happened to me i want to know more and i want to know more about the story and the history i mean um and yeah i really 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 enjoyed it i highly recommend you to pick this one up it's very worth it you will shed a tear at the end it's so round the story everything that is op gets in the open and you start to wonder if they will come back to that story will come back to that at the end of the book so everything will ha will have answers to everything that you are maybe you are wondering if Sheon is later in his life reunited with Yomaka so you had to read it and yeah was beautiful and Cheon is although he wasn't a spartan at the end he was one of them because he had the choice to leave and he didn't leave so i think that's that talks about the spirit of the group and the spirit of of or the feeling to be included in something even if that means your death so it's uh, i'm i'm talking and i'm <laughs> i'm becoming a bit emotional talking about it because trust me you will enjoy this book very much and if if you're a bit of a soft heart maybe you, you will shed some tears so yeah i really enjoyed it i hope you go and read it i you have here my recommendation um, I saw the, the movies, the 300 with, how is he called? With Gerald Butler. The movies from 2006. So I, I didn't rewatch because I watched this movie, I think when it came out, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't remember to ever coming back to it. But one thing that... Um, I noted is that Leonidas, the king of Sparta, is said in this story in Gates of Fire to have like 60 years old and so a uh, more older man and in the movie is like 30 or something. So I know that's for the purpose of the movie and to be more attractive, I suppose, but you know, and even Dionysus he was like six years many of the 300 were older men and some were, were younger like alexander's and well sheones although he wasn't really a soldier he was more um squire so he was a squire to the Enesis. but he fought you know so yeah i'm i'm going to stay here i'm <laughs> I'm trying to scavenge and see what else I can say about this story, but I think that I told you the basis and the sufficient plot that 
will entice your interest, I'm hoping, and it's my wish. So please, please go read it, and if you do, come back to this video and tell me all about it. If you enjoyed it, how do you feel about it? If you want to let some spoilers, do, uh, tell that at the beginning of the comment, spoilers, and give many spaces, and then leave your comment. I would love to read it, so let me know all about it. And yeah, I'm going to say goodbye now. Please subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed already. Don't forget to press the ring bell button to all so you can receive all my notifications. Leave a like, it helps a lot the divulgation of the video and the divulgation of the channel. Follow me on Instagram, I'll be posting there whenever I have a book review to do or anything else. And yeah, that's it. I see you on the next one. Bye!